Good morning and welcome to part four of this um, ongoing series on creating the great plate for the right way thing that's that way of course it's mirrored uh, for my contribution to this year's um, quarry art center great plate fundraiser um, all these plates will be in the exhibition I think it's on the 8th or the 9th I think it's on the 8th of July, which is the Friday before plunge, which is on Saturday um, morning. And so after it's been on exhibition, so you can see it all that time for a couple of weeks at the quarry, you can then, um, then the, um, the trade me auctions open uh, for the quarry's um, account there. And so you can actually go and bid on it. And um, I think from what I remember most, I think every... Um, you know, every work is offered up for about starting at fifty dollars, uh, and as you can see, you can see why because it takes a lot of time for specific artists to do specific things. So you know, depending on what you know, the hours they put in. And remember, this is a fundraiser, so they each artist is giving up their work and their time, which is more valuable than anything you can think of. Um, you know, time, people's time is so much so valuable, and it depends. Um, you know them taking um a time out of their out of schedule away from their families depending on what they do right you know and and as well as taking time away from creating for themselves they're actually giving away um to fundraise for a community um arts um place art center and which is very valuable as i've told i've been so I've mentioned before to the family community and also to you know to the wider New Zealand community of artists as, as well at large as well so um, last night I spent a couple more hours after going off air you know after live stream and I did some more carving of the plate so it was like this when I went off air finished it all off and then I was like yeah I, I just feel like I should get started carry on and then you know but having done that yeah the RSI said and quite nasty today but, uh, you know, a bit of medication and um, pills, whatever, and um, I want to get this done. I don't want to wait too long because uh, I want to make sure that this is out there and in time, ready to go to the kilns because, you know, there's specific days that these um, the kilns are fired up and I don't want to be holding that up or, or actually missing out, which is kind of could be worse because... You know having spent all the time on it and then missing out by um you know not having it ready for the actual exhibition and such and that 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 would be kind of sad um okay so the the thing here now is just to carve it out right so i'm gonna show you guys and hopefully i'll keep you entertained talking away as I do about whatever it is <laughs> that, that comes to mind when I'm thinking about this while I go away and of course it can be quite boring to watch someone you know and an artist work away at this uh, you know at, at you know whatever they're doing for long periods of time so it's pop in and out you know um, So um, this coming Saturday in Auckland is um, the 100th hundred, um, hundred event for Armageddon um, in New Zealand. You know, they started 27 years ago and they, um, you know, Bill and his team have been at it, coming out of a town hall in Auckland into, which he said still exists and still the same looking. And, um, you know, and spreading out all across New Zealand, um, you know, going in places and uh, realizing it wasn't going to work there, then moving away from there, then going to other places that worked well, and so on. You know, trial and error, as they say. Um, so this this is really cool. I mean, a hundredth event, right, a pop culture event in New Zealand, which is a feat in itself to actually get past uh, fifty, <laughs> let alone one. You know, and so I think it's great. Um, so if you're, you know, if 
that is your thing if you want something to do next weekend and uh, you know you want to support the hard work and effort they've put through um, these past few years I, I you know I employ to um, support that and also I mean you know having interviewed um hopefully you saw that video you, you're still welcome you know still up there so on my YouTube page and stuff um, you can watch the interview that I did uh, well, the discussion I had with um, with Bill about the whole history as well as the comic books side of things because he's a nerd you know well geek I said Jay maybe he's, I didn't talk about if he was a nerd as in computers because there's a difference between like <laughs> there is a there is a um, specific difference between which what I think anyway in my mind in my opinion between nerds and geeks and the thing is it's computers it's that mathematics side of things See, geeks are into comics and pop culture and, uh, you know, just the enter entertainment, uh, entertainment and fan, uh, fan side of things. Whereas nerds get really de deep into it. They know what exact, you know, com uh, button was used on what episode of um, Star Trek or what, uh, what that character um who what that person who acted and what character in what in what episode of uh you know of some you know some animated series was and that's that's what defines that's what in my mind right i think what um a, the difference between a geek and a nerd is is that that technical aspect um and i so i consider myself a geek in that for on that on that basis and um the cool thing is that um you know it's you know it's such a uh, such an awesome thing to be a part of because you know as we talked about with um with bill you know and um you know when you're when you're in that crowd back in the 80s 70s 90s you'd get bullied and that's not the awesome part but the part is that um you know you were you were kind of like um put in this group unwittingly by everybody else you know you were more um you weren't as fancy dressed and you know because that wasn't your thing your thing was like i want to you know i read books i enjoy this and this and i don't need to dress a specific way or whatever you just did it and and so there was this look that you know because you don't care about fashion and stuff, you know, when you're young and such, you know, your parents dress, mum and dad, mum dresses you, dad pays for it or either or, you know, and so on. And you end up just taking whatever clothing you're given. Whereas if you're not part of that sort of thing, you just, you end up basically being all about that. And so that sort of the clothing makes a man, they say, say, right? And so, you know, nerds and geeks who became, you know, um, bullied. Just, they knew, people knew exactly who you were just by the clothing you wore or what you liked and so forth. You get a lot of bullying happening at school. Now, right, now you, um, it's so popular that the new people who, are, who, who found it popular are the bullies again. So the, the people who have actually come into the, the come into the, you know, new into liking the things we've always liked for decades and decades and we'll get beaten over. The new people that have come in are basically the new bullies. And so you get bullied out of the things that you used to be bullied in, um, bullied for. And so you, you know, you kind of, you know, you always, the, you know, the, you always like the, the nerd that gets bullied. It doesn't matter what happens, or the geek that bullies. No matter what happens, even if the things that you've always liked is is welcomed and enjoyed by everybody now, it's seen as an in thing, right? The in crowd, right? So the popular kids are now nerds, right? And so these 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 previously popular kids have become the nerds and so on, and so they've taken over the they love the idea of being nerds and liking all these cool things but 
they don't like they don't appreciate the old people old people i guess you know the older crowd that actually kept these things alive so that it could be popular now you know they kept the fanfare alive and so once again they're getting um the old crowd's getting you know bullied again it's quite sad to see and uh, it's kind of it's a lot more prominent on social media um than you know in real life because people actually when you have to face people right and say things to their face people are quite quiet but um but behind the scenes social media they're quite loud and quite really like to oppress those um those you know people disagree and stuff they're really keen to you know make their point across without even listening to what is being said they're just like yeah i'm right and therefore that's that without even understanding whether there's a reason why someone you know the older nerds are saying well this is why it doesn't make sense because a lot of these older nerds are quite you know like i said they're quite nerdy right they know what they're talking about even i don't know most of the time what they're talking about so i don't you know i don't engage in that sense because i know that it's not i'm not that technically minded i haven't researched what they've spent decades themselves researching right and so for them it's very important because they understand you know they have kept these things alive and that's what i appreciate the older crew for you know um and and i think the problem is that when things can become popular people just take it on to them like anything else right it's just yeah this is the popular thing so i'll just like it for this and they'll be gone in a couple of years something else will be popular and those fair weather friends fans fair weather fans will also be you know moving on to something else and they'll leave behind a community of a of the original people who actually have loved this like i said for decades broken because the bullying would have divided them again right and so that aspect will still will remain right that will remain the bullying um the hurt from the bullying will remain but um the bullies will um the bullies will move on to the next thing and this is a sad part of um fandom and i think it's anything really it's not just fandom i think it's you know it's like school the bullies will move on to another school or whatever or you know or they'll grow up but the hurt and pain from the bullying will still remain in those people you know who are bullied I watched this um I watched this the um, the most recent South Park episode. Mm. Excuse me. I'm having um apricot not apricot um was it acorn not almond 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 coffee but I've got real milk in it. It's quite cheap so I grabbed the almond coffee and because it the substitute you know the almond milk whatever they call it powder for milk and so i just i stick it was cheap so i just thought yeah instant coffee i don't usually drink instant coffee except for it's like if it's these flavored ones i like my espresso in the morning but today i don't feel like spending time doing that making it up Yeah, so I was watching um, the latest episode of South Park, which is like a, a Paramount movie or something like that. The South Park movie. It's called The Streaming Wars. And they, as as always, right, Trey and, um, oh, gosh, I can't. I think Trey and something, Parker. Trey Parker and, oh, I always forget the other guy's name, but the two of them are, you know, they're brilliant satirists. They're like brilliant, you know. Um, reminds me of talking to um, the interview I did with on the podcast with um, Ross um, Ross Payne, who's going to be at Plunge about satire and stuff and caricature art and so on. 
And so, you know, they're really, really, really smart people. Um, and they're really good comedians. And they, you know, that's why they've survived these 20, 24, 23 odd years, just producing these amazing half an hour animated shorts uh, using kids, you know, I mean, elementary school kids as their um, base. And this one with the latest one with like the streaming wars, you know, it's just brilliant. It just shows just, uh, you know, the lens and just this satirical look at the whole um, Netflix, Paramount Plus, um, Disney Plus, HBO Plus, or whatever it is, HBO Max, you know, Universal, all these, and of course, uh, what was the other one? Amazon, <laughs> you know, all these different uh, people going to streaming instead of because it gets worldwide viewing right compared to having a channel where it's limited to the to airing in your own country or the country that they that's been licensed to right so no longer do you need to you know be in america or be in china or if they do that i don't know uh i know the animated series is coming out of china as well so uh you know um, korea and so you're getting a lot of korean um um, K dramas to call them, you know, in Japanese um, movies and stuff, and all this coming across, probably just you know within the same time, because of the streaming or a week or a couple of hours later, you know, around the world, and so you're getting to experience all these um, things instantly, whereas before you had to wait for the, you know, wait for the interest and see the popularity, and then, and then the no, broadcasting, you know, whatever network would buy the rights to it because it's popular overseas, so let's do it. Whereas now you don't have to worry about that. It's, if it's popular online, right, people are talking about it, boom, straight onto the streaming site. And so the war, right, the streaming war is, you know, there's only going to be, like, like with the studios, there's only going to be two or three left over after all these dozens and dozens of them and, you know, come to the core so there's all these mergers going on because it can't it's not a survivable model because you know of course it's allowing a lot more people to be able to work who never who didn't used to work before and or, or work for, you know or work, finding it hard to work you know um or find work sorry not hard, finding it hard to work but finding work and so you get you know people that that you know, nobody would ever see writing or, or actually um, writing shows or working on shows, directing them and so on, suddenly doing that, which is cool because it allows me, this means like there's a lot more um, talent out there, more skills being honed, because um, not everybody's ever going to be a, like a blockbuster movie director, right? So having all these different... Um, streaming sites has allowed these lesser named people to you know to work on bigger named um tv shows as such you know and they are you know use their skills whereas before it was just like oh you know i've you know they've basically done one or two episodes of tv or even not even that they've just worked on a whole bunch of short films and now suddenly you know they can team up and be able to work on a whole uh, Netflix movie or a Netflix TV series or whatever, or Hulu or Disney show or whatever. But the other side of the coin is you get a lot of people who don't aren't really that skilled coming into that, so who haven't honed their skills, um, cut their teeth as they say, right? And so because because that hasn't happened you're going to get like subpar um, production, uh, subtar storytelling, subtar uh, character um, building, world building, you know, like one of the worst and most recent things that we saw happen this way. And this whole thing was Cowboy Bebop. Cowboy Bebop was 
probably one of the most terrible takes that um, anybody could ever do on a, you know, the whole thing was shambles right from the get-go, you know. And it wasn't down, it wasn't because of the actors, except for one. It, and, you know, most of them, were, they were really, good. they were picked for their parts and they were really good. And, you know, for their, what the roles they were picked for, casters, right? So, but the sad part of that was that, um, I mean, the what they were given was terrible, right? What they were given to work with was terrible. The people who were writing, who were, you know, rewriting a classic, and you never mess with mess with classics. You do not mess with classics, right? The reason they're classic is because people have, you know, found it to be a good item, you know, good, good thing. And so people tell other people about it, and other people, and other people, and new people get into it, and so on, and so on. Over time, the love for it grows, so it becomes a classic, right? So you don't change anything to a classic. If you want to like make it live action, just do it as is. You know, let everything be the same, because you're gonna get the fans who want to see it as their characters come to life, right? So taking something like Cowboy Bebop. And twisting it into something it's not just because you think the the normal people right people who've never heard of it they're the they're the ones you want to go after but that's like that's not the ones you want to go after they're they're like the 20 percent of the overall 100 percent of your viewership that you want to go after so the ones you want to satisfy should and must always be the 80 percent right so Here's an example. So say if you're, if you're, if you have an event on and your event is all about, um, you know, comic books, right? And, and say the whole thing is to just promote comics and stuff. So you, you, you know, for years and years you bring in writers and artists and all that they're known and you go cool that's cool, cool and then you go now oh we're not getting enough people coming in to see them okay great okay so you know so you decide you know what we should do is add a bit more to it and so but you still you know you still have a comic con right and so com comic commission and so on and then as they're doing that you go the next you go you know what we could add a little bit to it that's different but the problem is, if you just do an overhaul straight away, the next year, the people that actually were there supporting you the first year will not come. So that 80% of interest, because you wanted that extra 20, you know, another 80%, you thought that, that, that it wasn't working the way you're doing it. And most things, you know, it's trial and error. You find out whether what's going to work, what's not. But you don't stop the first thing you keep the first thing and you just, you just add a bit more into it and so over time you know you're building a wider base of interest but you're still supportive of what's there and so if you don't do that stick with the original um, space whatever you're going to lose your your initial support base and that's not something you want to do if you're trying to get new people in on the get-go straight away so let's say this and this is why it, it, it was a terrible idea for what they did they didn't they you know they didn't trust in the material they didn't trust in the fan base for it but they they wanted the name they wanted you know they wanted the name they wanted to um have the brand you know so they bought mcdonald's and they started serving burger king basically and so n nobody wanted it and so after the first season they just can't they just canceled the whole thing they just said we're not going to do the second season it's over and it could have been great if they just stuck with the original and that's why cowboy bebop had such a huge backlash is because they didn't they didn't they decided from the start 
not to honor the actual source resource um the source material they wanted to change it they wanted to make it their own thing so rather than create their own thing they took what was already created and this is what we see in the modern uh, modern era of entertainment is that they like the name they like the fan support that has been there for that but they don't like the fans they don't care for uh, you know the fans who have kept it alive who have kept the interest going uh, who've supported the material who still go out and buy the books you know who tell their mates about it who go out and buy the dvds and so on right so people have spent hundreds and thousands of dollars and sometimes tens of millions on on an item they don't they're not the people the, these new um you know producers want because all they, all these studios want because they think that the people that they want are the new people but the new people don't even know what these things are right they only know about it once it's online but i mean once it's being broadcast or once the trailer's coming out and so on but the people they should be going after and supporting and looking after and listening to are the original people i mean not the original the original fans right the fandom people who've kept it alive people who've kept the artists fed by buying this material when nobody in you know in the pop you know in the you know nobody who did who weren't part of that scene as they say knew who the, that person was so that person has been kept fed because these artists and these that fan base have has kept them working you know and supporting and so on none of these new people have done that they've just watched the show and that'll be it they're not going to support the artist right they're not going to support the creators it's just it's a one and done that's what netflix is it's a one and done some shows will last some shows won't and you know like cowboy bebop it'll it'll just you know it won't matter after it's it's been shown it won't matter and so that's 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 the sadness of streaming i think um as much as you know it's a good thing of employing people it's also there's a downside like everything else but the one of the things that i think that really work in favor and everybody knows this that but if you if you're not in that fan base you probably don't know this but the whole the sega um Sonic debacle, right? The Sonic live action debacle. So, when when they put out the first, the trailer of the first, you know, the first trailer of Sonic movie, you could every, you know, the fans were going that that looks horrible. And so when they the fans said that it look it looks horrible, the character looks horrible. It's not really well done. The bad CGI. Uh, it's got teeth. Why does it have teeth? Right. Why does Sonic have teeth? So they straight away, people in the media and stuff were attacking the fans, right? Like I said, the fans have kept these things alive. They've played the games. They spent hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of dollars each on them over the years, right? The media hasn't done that. The media's nobody really. When it comes down to it, the media's just making money off, um, you know, talking about it. That's all they do. They don't promote it or anything. They just there to for you know. To get your attention to sell their paper or they sell the you know adverts on it um, on the websites so when the fans said dude this needs to be fixed please fix it you know and sony i think it was sega sony or sony they basically said okay yeah all right we'll listen and when they listened it became a billion dollar movie now taking point that with Harlequin, a comic book movie, right, from DC. So Harlequin has always, um, probably got a couple of figures up there, I've got a huge amount there. Her character, and that's Joker, you know, Harley Quinn Zell, uh, the character from DC Comics. So the Joker, right, she's the Joker's, this is whatever, you know, love interest crazy as it is as he is 
that they do have a relationship. And so for that character was not developed in the movie, uh, in, the, in the comic books. The character was developed in the, in the comic, uh, sorry, in the animated series, Batman, uh, Batman Adventures, I think it was. And so it already, you know, for it was so popular in that they brought that character created by Paul Denny and I can't remember the other person's name. Um, and so they it became so popular, DC decided, well, editors, whatever, decided, well, we should bring her into the comic books, which they did. I think it was about 1990, something like that. And because of the ca cartoon series, animated series, Girls were into it, like young girls were right into the character. They dressed in the red, a red, white, and black. Right? It was such a, you know, bright, you know, uh, flashy character, and the, and the design was perfect. Everything, they, you know, Paul and them, you know, his um, uh, um, creative team must have worked on it for ages. Right? Uh, the whole design of that. Now, so. So that that look was so popular, right? And has always been. And I've got like, like I said, I've got figures, I've got masks, uh, you know, and so on. And I think I might even have a T-shirt somewhere. Um, and so, because of the popularity, like I said, they came in, you know, toys were getting sold, all this stuff, and. Lo and behold, they decided they were going to, um, you know, a couple of years ago, I think it was 2018, something like that, they decided, well, we're going to create a movie with this character, right? You know, Birds of Prey, the, um, the Emancipation of Harlequinzel, or Harlequin, something like that. And so, they made a major mistake right away. They decided that they were going to remove that uniform and make it look like what I consider a bag lady. And that's not a derogative, but it's just like basically that they dress her up in like bits and pieces of material. Like it was a hodgepodge of, uh, you know, it was a hodgepodge of cost um, fabric of different various things and it was nothing like the character that everybody knew nothing like the design of the costume everybody knew remember girls young girls and old woman older woman and older older um, you know teenagers and so on and 20 year olds do dress up and do cosplay this character in that red black and white costume checkered costume very well known right so, so that you don't misunderstand what I'm trying to say here between you know the look of Sonic and the look of this character, right? So, because a traditional character and the traditional look of it, and they changed it. One, you know, one move, you know, one company decided not to listen to fans and not to mess with the character, and another did. Right, and because the fans felt like that they were, you know, they're being heard, and not only that, that they, that they, their character, their beloved, was being, a, you know, was going to get reworked and was going to be have this cool, you know, the original look of it and the right look of it. They they supported it, in say in Sonic, and now Sonic has. Um, a set, you know, the new movie, you know, part two just came out, it was really fun as well to watch, you know, and if you haven't watched them both, please do, they're really cool movies, you'll enjoy yourself, there's good characters, good mix of, um, you know, original characters, and just, you know, the game side of things, keep fans, um, original fans happy, and newbies like myself, who's, who probably never played a game of um, Sonic, because I think was it a 90s thing? I don't know. I've never really, wasn't really my thing. I know my friends were playing it. Um, you know, friends I knew, friends I knew were playing it. I'm, I wasn't much of a, you know, like I said, I was a comic fan, not much of a gamer. 
and it's still done game damage, though I have, you know, several, com um, two co consoles, I guess, and so on. But, um, yeah, and then you've got Hobbit Twin, and the director was out there just going, yeah, this is what we're going to do, this is what we want to do, and it's like, that's not how you, that's not how you um, support the fan base, that's not how you, you know, listen to the fan base, because they're the ones, the, the original fan base is the one who's going to come to you and give you the money, right? Your 20% is going to give you the 80%. It's common business sense that this is how, this is how it works. That, um, you know, 20% of your um, fan, um, like your, you know, your customers are the ones who spend 80%. They'll come, come back and back. They'll keep coming back and back and back. And they're the ones you've got to make sure that you look after. And these two movies is a stark, you know, contrast to, you know, in, in showing the difference in why you should actually listen to fans. I mean, to a, to a, you know, to, to a reasonable account, because, you know, it's, you can't always listen to everything, because you still got to stick with your original, you know, I mean, to your artistic, you know, whatever you're trying to do with it, but there is a certain um, aspect to it, and, um, I mean, level that you have to actually give a give credence to what the fans are saying because these it's the fans have kept it alive for when nobody else cared right when there was nothing new coming out the fans would still talk about it they'd still talk about the you know the first whatever and they'll bring their new friends into it or you know talk and that's the thing there's, there's something that a lot of um you know businesses talk about a lot about the whole social media thing but they don't realize that there's the other aspect where there is the physical in-person contact that people one-on-one -on -one at parties you know around their mates over movies sit around and it's not just the guys when i say mates i mean females as well that they take will talk around you know over coffee whatever and they discuss have you seen this movie have you seen that game have you done that you know and then they talk about it and then they like raise interest and say why they're into it what you know and they, and all that builds that community builds that interest and all you know in the item and even if that it's a dead thing nothing's happened right no new things come out that still continues and um you know and over time it catches on to popular culture right it becomes popular and so you get more people in more people coming to it and so then you're able to oh you know what we might it's so you know people still show interest so the companies will go oh yeah well, we might as well put out another one or rework it update it and all this stuff right but that's only done because the original fans have been there from the start and have been you know been supporting it from all that Time when nobody else knew what was going on all right it's like it's like um let me see uh teenage mutant ninja turtles i'm not you know i watched the uh, cartoons when i was younger not a, yeah not i can do with or without it it's not major for me um you know i won't go i might find you know buy a rare comic book of it or whatever for my collection but I won't go out of my way to look for it, All right? So, because because I'm not going to go out of my way to look for it. It doesn't. I'm not that. What is it called? I'm not that tied to the fandom, to the base. I don't know. You know, most of the time I don't even know the characters' names or who's or who. And um, but I'll pick up whatever for because it's pop culture because it's it's you know it's it's in my realm of comic books and stuff. And so, you know, with all that, you know, there is a huge fan base that, you know, has kept it alive and it's become popular and popular and popular. They've had movies um, every now and, then, now and then they'll release new um, cartoon series and the comic books are still going with different writers and so on, different artists. And, you know, every now and then the original um 
I think the rights have been sold, whatever. And the original um, artist will put out something. Oh, creator Kevin Eastman will put out something, and you know, because there's a there is an aspect that like you, you can't continually put out as much quality of stuff as someone wants because there comes a point where you just run out of ideas and like you know and so on but yeah so that's been kept alive by the fans and so you know people buying to um toys and raising kids is the thing like there's the other thing that comes part of this it's like giving gifts you know getting family members interested in it and so on that's a social personable growth that comes with uh continued good relationships between uh fans and the product now if you suddenly decide well the fans don't matter anymore well they'll stop talking about it they'll go well you know what yeah don't like the way they treat us so we're just going to stop find something else and we'll you know we'll do that but that's that's my thing take on these things and and i think this in the end, the original fans will stick around. Uh, the new popular fans, you know, fan base will will go on to move on to something else. Um, but the damage will be done, and and the long term effects, right? That quick dollar that the the quick the quick dollar that the companies, you know, the studios want, the production team wants, whatever. They don't realize the damage that will come to the long term of that brand because they just want now and and this is the kind of thing that's like it also comes in like um actual business where you have like executive they're just there for a couple of years so they know that they're going to be you know they'll move on they're there to a stepping stone to the next thing and the next thing and so because of that they don't really care about the lasting aspects of what damage it might have done to the brand and i mean brand in the sense of fandom right oh uh, uh, you know or what because they just they probably end up go you know one day they're working for marvel the next they were working for dc so two different brands i guess comic brands whatever industry um giants and so they're not too worried about if there's a huge damage left behind and what they've created now and so that you know that's just like, i guess it's kind of like instant callousness they don't really care about the moment uh, the future they just care about the now and so there's no building or respect for the past and there's no um, you know so there's no con no concern about what's going to happen if somebody else new has to come and fix it and that sort of kind of is a bummer because you know the damage is done the damage can last for a long time and so the property or you know in the sense like whatever movie franchise whatever you know is left in shambles because of what they've done and so the only ones that really care or are burnt in the end are the are the fan base so what's happening now is a lot of fans are just saying, yeah, no, nah, thank you, bye. You know, if you don't want our commerce, why should we give you our custom? You know. But that's that's the downside of, you know, wanting that instant uh, net streaming gratification, you know, that show that I can watch in one sitting the entire season. And so I think that's, that's part of and parcel of that. It's like, well, what do we care about next um the future because we'll just produce another new show to bring them back in you know there's no longevity in in streaming and i think that's what's bringing all this on is because of the lack of longevity and seeing um and seeing future um you know future well, I didn't realize it was happening. The light had gone so bright there. Sorry. You know, um, yeah.
in future productions and stuff. And I think they'll realize, give it 10 years when all these, most of these streaming sites are gone, they'll realize, and there's only four left out of a dozen, right? Or five. But very minimal amount, number, right? Either or. Then they will realize that there is nobody there interested in what they have to offer anymore. So, yeah, I'm going to keep this one simple. I'll just think about it if I could make it really intense, but I'm just going to keep it simple and bounce it out. Hopefully, I'll be finished this week with it. Don't know <laughs> if I have time. I've got a couple few th few things I'm going to do this week that's urgent that has to be out. But I just needed this to actually give my hand a bit of a rest because it was getting frozen on the mouse. So the best way to do is do this. Give, you know, let my fingers be, be more flexible because when it's on the mouse, you're always like this. So if I get my fingers moving a bit more in a different way, it'll help it um, That's interesting. I'll have to come back to that one. Yeah, they will realize that, like, I mean, you know, nobody's going to, has the time, really. If, you, if you're going to produce, like, a hundred episodes, a um, hundred different um, new shows a week, right, and so on, people don't have that, you know, not everybody's going to watch it. And not only that, there's no longevity to that because you put out another one, <laughs> another one, 100 episodes next month, I should say, not a week, 100 episodes, you know, 100 um, new things next month. And so they'll move on to that and then they'll do that and then that. So there's no long term industry there for whatever product you're selling, you know. Like you take for, um, take for, um, yeah, instance, Stranger Things, great show, great show. Um, after this long break, I'm sure there's a the fan, there's a huge amount of fans that have a real strong connection to it. They've grown up with it over the last ten years. No, something like six, eight years. I don't know. I'll have to look it up. But, but you know, they um. They've basically built a good, you know, um, I think it's been eight years, something like that, I'm not sure. I think my nephew was four or something like that when it came out. Or, no, no, it can't be four. He must have been six, so it might have been six years. Anyway, so he's grown up with it, and such. so is my niece and nephew and my other nephew. And so, yeah, she became, I think it must have been eight years because she became a teenager through it um, in the change. And so they've enjoyed it. And, you know, I just said, it's basically what we were like when we were kids. And and those, the Doppel Brothers, Dobler, the Doppel Brothers, what they call, they did a great thing of writing that into that, like creating that, and they, um, you know, and that, um, that bringing that 80s feel to it, bringing our lifestyle, because I'm, I'm an 80s kid, well, not 80s kid, I'm an 80s, um, not a teenager, or am I? Yeah, yeah, I'm actually at 80 teenagers. Yeah. And so, you know, just, it was great to share that, just, you know, just say, hey, this is what we used to do, run around on bikes, build huts, and have our little clubs, you know, and all this. Um, but so, but here's the thing, right, and I noticed this, the interest, because of COVID, because the show was supposed to come out last year, I think it was, that lack of uh, connection, you know, to the next season being broken because of COVID, it's just it's just a consumption now. I feel like it's just it's just a consumer thing. You don't see that much that many people talking about it online as you did prior to COVID, right? It's the same thing that were, that was like with um, that happened with. Game of Thrones, but Game of Thrones destroyed itself because of the last season, right? So there was that failure. So you can't really, I guess you can't do the, 
talk about the same thing, but like um, the aspect I'm trying to say is like, um, or the point I'm trying to make on that point between the two is that people don't talk about Game of Thrones anymore as much as because they did that. So if you take in my, put in mind the fact that um, this, the two years of breaking apart, I mean the two years of break, I should say, because of COVID and filming and not being able to film and all that and you know location shootings whatever they had to do and work everything that came along with COVID right I don't need to go on about that so um that's put a that put a pause and in interest in people so in that same time Disney has been putting out all these shows right their competitor Netflix competitor right even though Netflix doesn't really have a competitor. However, the decisions they've made they've made has given their competitors leeway to jump on whatever, you know, mistakes they've made and utilize all the production thing. Because, you know, these are billion dollar companies and they want your attention, right? Um, and so they have the money to get your attention. And so, yeah, so in a sense, I think we, um, the Stranger Things season four hasn't had as much uh, attention on it. It's kind of like a sleeper, right? Just come in, oh, it's out, okay. Where were we last time we watched it? Oh, okay, maybe watch the last episode to get a bit of a, you know, figure out what's happened. And, but the thing is that they jumped to to an older time, so there wasn't because they jumped in older time because of two year phase because everybody's grown up, right? Um, I guess it's four, maybe three years because you know the kids are growing up, would have done like you know they look older and such. So there was this disconnect between what happened then and now. So I guess they will do flashbacks and stuff. I haven't I've only seen like about twenty minutes or less than that of the first season, and I was like, yeah, I think I'll just do some work. And what's some anime? Oh, that's fine. That's cool. I thought I made my mistake here. And so, here we go. It's getting there. A bit, come a bit closer. Um, so, 50% is done. 50% uh, of this carving is done. All I go, and then I'll go on and do the rest, and then I'll do the cleanup, do the smoothing, and all that. Yeah, so, you know, at this point, it's just another show. It's not like a must-watch. What it used to be, like, it came out every, I don't know, every year, I guess, or something. And then, so, you yeah, connections to kids and stuff, growing up, you know, going through the trials, tribulations, as they say. And, but now it's like, well, it's just another show. Because of that break, and it's no fault of its own. And that's the thing, this is like, sometimes there is no fault of its own, because you can't blame, you know, the creators for it, or you, or the streaming giant, right, because, you know, it's affected everybody, COVID has, um, when it comes to this sort of thing, but I think it would, it's affected them more, uh, in a sense, because not only have they lost, um, you know, the big, huge, kind of yearly um, yearly um, support they had from their fan base and new viewers who turn on to it and so on. Um, but now, it's just another show. Whereas before, it was a standout, um, you know.
Okay, well, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to do something different. Um, when I come back with part five, I'm just going to I'm going to try um, streaming. <laughs> Talking about streaming, I'm going, to, I'm going to try streaming. I'm going to take a break. Uh, move around a bit more. Get my back to um, you know. Get my back a bit of uh, spine, a bit of rest, and my neck bending down a bit of rest. I think I should drop the seat down as well. But yeah, give it a bit more work here, and um, and then we'll come back and we'll probably be live streaming on YouTube. Cheers. Thanks for watching, guys.